Uh, how do we attain true ma'rifa? Ma'rifa is gnosis or knowledge of Allah. Uh, Allah is known through His names and His attributes. As for Allah's essence, then this can never be fully known. His essence resembles no other essence. Even the prophets don't know Allah in the sense that they don't know His essence. Our Master Abu Bakr Siddiq said, None know Allah other than Allah. So, so, uh, uh, so in, uh, exercise great manners and caution. And the deen or religion is two, either belief or uh, associating partners with God. And there are limits to the intellect, so do not go beyond them. And to fall short of realization is actually known as realization. Our intellects are governed by certain laws. The law of causes, the lack of contradiction. This is how the small human weak mind is. Allah governed it by no contradictions within it. For example, the scholars say, any entity, either it is moving or it's stationary. So if the human intellect tried to think, is there a state for an entity which is not either movement or being or stillness? You can think for a hundred years. You're going to find that your intellect cannot picture an entity except that it is either moving or stationary. This is the uh, power of the human mind even in its imagination. The human mind cannot imagine something unless you knew it previously. If you did not know it, you would not be able to imagine it. For example, you measure against something else. For example, if you never visited a capital city such as Paris or London and you heard about a capital city such as Paris or London and so you imagine it, and so now when you imagine it, you're actually measuring against something which you've already seen of streets and of buildings. The human mind can't not initiate something which does not have something which it previously has seen. But this doesn't mean that just because the human mind cannot initiate something which is not measured against something which it's prior, prior, seen prior, uh, it doesn't mean that there isn't nothing that will be in existence which it hasn't seen, but this is the human limit of the mind. <laughs> Such as it can be said, <laughs> let's say that a human being <laughs> doesn't know snakes, <laughs> nor other reptiles, <laughs> and it doesn't know it at all. <laughs> so it was said to him, <laughs> there is a creature <laughs> or a, an animal or insect that walks on its stomach which is so quick which is faster than a human that runs and it might uh, be quicker than a person on a horse if you didn't never knew or never seen a snake you are going to measure this according to your own mind and you say well I can walk or crawl on my stomach 
But it's not as quick as that person is describing. It's impossible for a person or something to come on their stomach and walk so quickly. But when you see the snakes, you'll believe this. So for this reason, the scholars, may Allah have mercy on them, said, that which we hear regarding Jannah, paradise, from grapes and melon and uh, olives and other fruits. This does not resemble any of the fruits of the world. Uh, they are not similar in anything except their names. So you find that the pomegranates of the uh, of the paradise are different to the pomegranates of the and the, the color of the pomegranates are different. And even more importantly, the taste is different. They only gather here with their names. So if you enter paradise, and you saw that food in paradise, you'll say, glory be to God. This is called pomegranate, but the pomegranate here is different to the life of the world. So for this reason, our Lord said, when he mentions the bliss of paradise, in most or perhaps uh, all of the verses, he mentions the similitude. So he says the similitude of the paradise which was promised for those who fear God. And come and it comes to them in resemblance. So, as Ibn Abbas says, this resemblance is only its in its name, it's not in its color, nor is in its taste. We ask Allah Ta'ala to grant us uh, some... Uh, so, how long does the delight of it taste uh, last in your mouth? The Prophet said, as the Imam Ibn Abi Hatim reports, that one morsel of food in Jannah, the, its delight and sweetness will pass through the mouth and body for the duration of 1,000 years. So how long does a morsel of food last in our mouths? 20 seconds, 30 seconds, or less than that. However, a thousand years, you will delight in the taste of one morsel of food in paradise. There is the bliss in which there will be no wretchedness. And that joy and happiness in which there will be no sorrow. Here in this world, we have conflict and contradiction. It doesn't have anything in this world other than the love of that great Lord and following the Prophet. What is there in this world? Food? The food is the food. The banana that you had yesterday has the same taste as the banana you had today. The meat that you have today will have the same taste as the meat you have after a month. But look to the food of paradise. The delight increases. The second most of the food will have a different taste to the first. The delight of the second fruit is different to the delight of the third fruit. And in this way it will continue for eternity. This is the omnipotence of the Creator whose omnipotence is beyond any limit, who is compassionate to his and merciful to his slaves. He who is the one who will bring retribution to the devils, the avenger, uh, he is the, those devils that harm the human and taking to those who take the pure human beings who are ready. However, they take them to the hellfire. Human beings are pure. All of them. They, it is possible for them to be guided. They are ready to reach the highest levels of love. But the greatest danger are the devils, Satan. He, he will never accept guidance. 
It's not possible for us to imagine that that was The Prophet said, except my devil. This is unique for the Prophet. Because of the overpowering strength of the uh, spirit of the Prophet Muhammad. So Allah said, Allah, the Prophet said, Allah has given me power over him, and so he either submitted or he became Muslim. Sorry, he either submitted, meaning he became Muslim, or I became safe from him. We must take humanity to the divine mercy in this life and in the second life. As for this first life, this compares nothing to the next life. This is extremely short. It is in that life in which in where there's a great duration and there is great might in its life. It's filled with happiness and light. Allah, Allah, Allah makes of the pious, inshallah. Those who are beloved to the noble Lord, beloved to the all merciful Lord, beloved to the, the, the all great, all, all, the, the, the Lord of gratitude, the beloved to the, the Lord who begins, the Lord who expands, beloved to the benefactor, beloved to the Lord who is all loving. O oh, most merciful of the merciful, O oh, most noble of the noble, we are weak. So unveil for us from the reality and fill our, our hearts with such that we can see the unseen world as though it is seen, such that we can be pious people, such as the prophets and the messengers. We are not prophets or messengers, but ka meaning like the prophets and messengers. It's enough that you are like them in just one quality, in uprightness and in also in prayer, and in bringing benefit to humanity, even if it were to be an animal, even a tree, even an insect. Some of the pious in her small village and in his little little hut. He used to take the breadcrumbs. This is someone who is extremely advanced in his sensitivities. He senses the animals, let alone the human beings, and their pain. That which, that which remained of breadcrumbs, he placed it in front of the ant hole and the small insects. And so some of them would say, what were you doing there? He said, maybe there's a blind insect or one that's got a broken leg that can't go out to seek its food, so I'll bring it to it. Look, something like this may not take any thoughts from people. What are these insects? And if he heard its speech, or its call, or its asking for assistance, or its pain, he will know that he partakes with it in life. But he doesn't hear anything. He just thinks it's a crawling insect, but it has its life. Allah created it in this size. Do not see that it is something that is so small. Oh, what if this ant was something huge? And you used to hear its address like the Prophet Sulaiman. And it was complaining of hunger. And it was better than some people. Because insects do not initiate harm to people unless it defends itself. If you saw a snake in front of you, it's not going to necessarily harm you immediately. But when it feels danger, it may defend itself. But the human being, if he does not purify his mind, he may initiate harm without anyone harming him. So he'll be a more abased than the animals and inferior to those beasts which harm. And if a person has an illuminated mind, he becomes mightier than the angels because he has succeeded in his examination, the examination of life.